Hi, Scorpio and Scorpio Rising. Here's your horoscope for July 2024. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, the year is just moving right along. And this time of the year, we have the sun going through cancer in your ninth house. It, this year, it's also joined by Venus and Mercury in this ninth house. So there's a need for exploration. There's a need for adventure. There's a need for uh, learning new things as we begin the month. And so this is the theme uh, throughout the first half of the month. The second half of the month, when planets move into the 10th house of career and status, now things begin to change for many of you. Okay, so your ruler right now is sitting down here at the fourth on the fourth house going backwards and retrograde. So, you know, you're questioning everything. Am I in the right place? Is this the right job? Am I in the right situation? And this is typical of many signs. Okay, so don't think it's just you. Uh, this reading is for anyone who has a rising sign in Scorpio or has a sun sign in Scorpio. It's a general Western astrology tropical reading. It's a sun sign reading based on the Western astrology. Uh, it's a very general reading because I don't have everybody's birthday and everyone's birthday and birth charts are completely different. So this is a general overview. So as we uh, unfold in the month, we see Mars, which is also your co-ruler in the seventh house. So you're starting off the month in a very busy social uh, environment, especially with planets in a favorable alignment in the ninth. So socializing, uh, gathering information, uh, you know, being around a lot of people is what I see for many of you. Now, Mars will leave the seventh house and go into your eighth house of finance. And so that's gonna uh, be a big boost as well. At the same time, the full moon this month will also highlight your third house of uh, ideas and communication, and I'll get to all of that as well. So as we start the month, we have Neptune going retrograde for the last time in, in Pisces right there. As you can see, it came real close to going into uh, Aries, and it will do that next year. But this retrograde here is in your fifth house of love, creativity, fi um, um, children. It's... Uh, it's about having more fun. And so the Saturn is already there in retrograde and now we'll have Neptune retrograde moving backwards. So what this means is you're revisiting things from the past, situations from the past. Maybe you're dealing with children from the past, you know, uh, education or uh, something that they're, they have going on from the past and that you have to deal with as well. So it's not a really a big deal because um, Neptune's gonna take about four and a half to five months staying retrograde saturn will move forward i believe it is in september and so uh there'll be some energy movement going forward but it is this is a lot of sort of responsibility and uh, taking care of uh business or taking care of family matters which are going to be very important beginning this month so that's how i would interpret that okay so we also have mercury entering leo on the second so at the same time, or I think it's about an hour later or so, Mercury moves into Leo. Now, Mercury in Leo is very much a go-getter. It's an idea uh, alignment. It's in your 10th house of career. So what I'm seeing here is now you're focusing a lot more of your attention on your job or your work or your business, and you're in a very creative mode where you need more attention or you have a product or service that you're putting out there or being in the public more. So that desire is gonna definitely increase because Mercury uh, will be joined by Venus and the Sun by the end of the, uh, of the uh, month. So this is gonna be a very big house for many of you to focus a lot of your attention on, okay? But before that, the new moon will be in Cancer on the fifth right here at 14 degrees. So wherever that is in your actual birth chart, that's the area that gets lit up. So for this sun, uh, sun chart reading, it has to do with the ninth house of higher learning uh, exploration, meaning of life, purpose, politics, religion, this all falls under this umbrella. And so this opens up a doorway for the next two weeks where you'll be questioning everything. Uh, are you thinking about moving? Are you thinking about traveling to uh, uh, for vacation, going to the island somewhere, somewhere near water? Cancer is a water sign like yours. So the desire to travel will be very strong at this time. And so maybe you're making plans for a vacation somewhere near water. And so that's part of the equation here also. Maybe you're going away for a training or, you know, an event that involves marketing and you're talking in front of people. Uh, that is a possibility here as well. If it has nothing to do with that, it could have something to do with family dynamics because cancer is associated with family. And so we're seeing some of that here. Now it's making a favorable, as a favorable aspect to Mars at 19 degrees. 
and it's also making a favorable aspect to uh, Saturn at 19 degrees. So what I'm seeing here is, is this something having to do with family or a partnership that you're going to be dealing with? It could be personal or it could be business related, you know, and it could involve real estate or the home life or for instance, somebody moving in with you or somebody moving, you know, somebody, uh, a family member moving in or something to do with real estate. That is also on the table because it is this, the sign of cancer that the new moon is in. So it is exciting. It is something new that's coming in and it looks good. It looks favorable. So I would say, you know, try it and see where it takes you. Now, Venus enters Leo on the 11th right there. And so Venus is in a very strong position now in Leo in the 10th house. So th for you guys, this has a lot to do with being seen and being heard in the public, but it has to do with partnerships. And so if you're a business and you're thinking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, some form of partnership or contracts or agreements, this could be a good time for many of you. Uh, if you're of age of getting married and thinking about getting married, you know, or basically uh, telling the world that you're in a committed relationship, yes, this could be one of those where you want the world to know uh, that you're in a committed relationship, you know, that kind of thing. So it really depends on your own actual birth chart. But this uh, absolutely shows me that, you know, this is front and center. Uh, if it doesn't pertain to any of those things, it could have something to do with your job. So let's say you're in a job and you're getting a lot more attention. You want more recognition. Maybe you want more pay. This could also be beneficial uh, for asking for a raise or getting a promotion at work. So you see, it depends on your actual birth chart and where all these alignments are. But generally speaking, these are the themes for that house. Now, Mars enters Gemini on the 21st. Now, the, on the 21st, we also have the full moon, and I will cover that in a minute. But Mars is your co-ruler entering the eighth house, which is naturally associated with Scorpio. And so this is really now switching your focus a lot to communication, ideas, but also finance and shared resources, because this house has a lot to do with that. It has a lot to do with debt and mortgages and lending and loans and anything to do with financial stuff on that end. And so with Jupiter there and Mars there now, you know, for the next uh, five to six weeks, there's a lot of talk about money matters and investments and insurance and this uh, regarding, you know, anything to do with your financial picture. And so this is going to amp up the energy there. So if you're making good money, this could also bring in more income. Uh, if you're not doing too well financially, you may consider different options to get rid of your debt or, you know, find a way to bring in more income. It looks good. So try what you can, you know, to make it happen because it does look like a good month. Uh, there's really nothing holding you back from, you know, moving forward, especially with these planets in the 10th house. Okay. So, but Mars will be in this sign of Gemini, which is overthinking things. So be careful of overthinking. That would be my, my suggestion. Now, at the same time, I think it was about an hour or two later, the full moon in Capricorn actually happens on the 21st, but I put this chart to the 20th so I could show you the moon there. So it'll be right here on the cusp of the fourth house, and it'll be joined by Pluto, your ruler. So what this is suggesting, something to do with the home life, real estate matters, uh, maybe remodeling, females, um, you know, mother family uh, dynamics because it's so close to the fourth house. The fourth house has to do with the home feeling and foundation. So this full moon is bringing to light something about either your job or your home life or your emotions or, you know, the connections that you have with your family. Uh, you're coming to some sort of realization about all of this stuff. That's what it's suggesting here. Now it is making some favorable alignments to Neptune and also uh, Mars and Uranus. So you could be in for some surprises, let's put it that way. And I'm not saying they're bad or good, but you could be in for some surprises around this time and this full moon in Capricorn, okay? It could involve your work or it could involve your home life or it could involve a coworker, it could involve a spouse, a uh, partner of some kind, all right? So this is gonna be a, a big one to watch. Now, Leo enters, um, the sun enters Leo, its own sign, on the 22nd. So this is really strong. So as you can see here, three planets in the 10th house of career and status. So what this means is you're absolutely focusing more on your purpose, your direction, your drive, you know, how you're seen, uh, taking a more important role in your, your business life or your job, 
and, and, and taking on a lot of responsibility or advancing something that you're really passionate about. You know, because Leo energy is a very strong, fiery, get up and go kind of energy. It's not docile and passive. And so you're going to find yourself uh, really motivated at this time to get things done, to make things happen, to create. You know, Leo is a very creative sign. So you're going to find that inspiration to create. Uh, just be careful because as you can see here on the 22nd, the sun opposes Pluto, just like uh, Venus will. And so there could be a little tension for a day or two, and then all of a sudden it passes. So uh, this could be a push and pull. Do I want to move? Do I want to change jobs? Do I want to take on this new role? You know, you'll be questioning all of it. So if, you, if there's too much pressure, don't make the decision until you, it feels right to you. And then last but not least, on the 25th and 26th, we have Mercury entering Virgo. So you'll be analyzing every aspect of this move or decision that you need to make towards the end of the month. And, uh, you know, you'll come to a, a, a decision, but it could be one that's a little confusing and feeling a little irritated because of Mercury entering the analytical sign of Virgo. But overall, I do see it's going to be a pretty good month for many of you. So I say do the best you can, experience what you need to experience, and, uh, you know, go from there. All right. So have a great month. Stay tuned for a little uh, special offer that I have, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now. Hi. Thank you so much for watching my monthly astrology. I really appreciate your support over the years. Have you ever considered learning astrology? Well, you're in luck because I've created a full online astrology course in my private community. It's a full six module course that takes you from the beginning of astrology, what it all means, the mythologies, the houses, all the way to the more advanced techniques, such as progressions, solar returns, how to, how to read transits, how to make predictions. It's all there in this course here. And I even dive into some of the mysterious stuff, you know, what some of the symbolism is all about. So I think you might want to check it out if you're interested. Along with the course, we have a very tight knit community here where everyone helps each other out. And so if someone knows a lot about astrology, they help other people with astrology. So it's a community that really gets involved and, you know, really wants to learn and help each other out. But as you can see here, I have a whole lot more on this uh, private community. Uh, I also have the inner circle live calls each week. Now, this is something that I do twice a month on YouTube, but here I do them on a weekly basis. And I talk about various topics. You get to ask me questions, we interact, and we learn a whole lot more than just astrology. So this could be anything from astrology to what's going on in the world, predictions, politics, whatever it is, we talk about it in the inner circle calls. Of course, I do have videos here that I do not have on YouTube. So you get the, you get uh, those two. And then I've got a private resource vault, which has videos uh, that I suggest watching, books, suggested reading, meditations, and more. So if you're interested in learning astrology or want to be part of a great community that's really growing fast, head on over to the link down below and click on the link and join today. All right. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.